In 1996, Patagonia made the uncomfortable realization that the cotton that they were using in the majority of their garments was super bad for the environment and the people who farmed it. So that year, Patagonia decided that they would switch to 100% organic cotton. But this was back in the 90s, and the organic cotton industry just literally didn't exist. So what did they do? Well, they made their own in only 18 months. So Patagonia made organic cotton the revolutionary material of the 90s, and now they're trying to do the same thing with hemp today. Since that absolute Hail Mary of a play, we see organic cotton being used in clothing lineups across the fashion industry, which was actually the market trend that Yvonne Chouinard foresaw from the beginning. I mean, it paid off for you and you led a change in the industry, but it was, it was a big risk. Yeah, it cost us more in the first place, and it puts us way ahead of the competition. Who's not selling organic cotton? You know, marketing-wise, is a smart move, really. Today, any company that claims to care about the planet uses organic cotton. The production of organic cotton has more than quadrupled in the last 10 years. But here we are today, with Patagonia leading the fashion industry once again towards hemp, in the very same way that they did with organic cotton back in the day. Now, if you're confused why a billion dollar corporation like Patagonia is getting involved with hemp, well, let's clarify a few things. This is not a partnership with Snoop D-O-double-G or some harebrained scheme to make smokable t-shirts or something like that. No. Although that would technically make them zero waste, which is up Patagonia's alley, I, I, I suppose. No, hemp is the twin sister of another similar plant that we can't mention here on YouTube because we get demonetized when we talk about it, like we did the last time we uploaded this video eight months ago. These uses range from hemp concrete to rope and fuel, and early sailors used hemp in their sails at sea. Now, the early sailcloth industry eventually moved on to cotton because it was lighter, local, and more importantly, cheaper because it was grown and processed by slaves. More damaging, though, was hemp's association with its illicit sibling. After the 1937 passing of the Marijuana Tax Act and the subsequent passage of the Controlled Substances Act in 1970, basically, hemp and that other plant were forever banished from legal use in North America. These two acts were built on a lot of misunderstanding about this plant and some pretty blatant racism. If you want some more info on that, we have links to some resources in the description. But here we are in a time of legal amazingness with our plant freedoms reinstated. We are out enjoying ourselves in a variety of ways that we never thought possible before. And along with this recreational enjoyment, we have a booming hemp industry, led in part by Patagonia. So if Patagonia is putting big money down on hemp, how does it compare to traditional cotton? Well, let's put them in the ring and find out. Round one, growth. Hemp takes three to four months to reach maturity, while cotton takes five and a half to six and a half months. Hemp one, Cotton zero. Round two, yields. A single hemp plant yields 220% more fiber than a cotton plant. Hemp two, cotton zero. Round three, water. Hemp actually needs far less water than cotton, less than a third in most cases, and therefore little to no irrigation is needed. It is estimated that you need around 1,700 liters of water for one kilogram of hemp against 10,000 liters of water for one kilogram of cotton. I thought that was honestly wrong when I first read the script. That's crazy. Hemp three, cotton zero. Round four, chemicals. Hemp is actually pest resistant and the roots protect the soil from erosion and cleans toxins from the soil and groundwater. On top of that, it actually helps reverse climate change by pulling carbon out of the atmosphere and storing it in their root systems underground. Apparently, industrial hemp sequesters between 5 and 18 tons of carbon per hectare of cultivated land. On the other hand, cotton uses 6% of the world's pesticides and 16% of the world's insecticides while covering just 2.4% of the world's cultivated land. Hemp 4, Cotton Zero. 
Now at this point you're wondering, wow, this is getting kind of brutal. It's almost hard to watch, you know? This is a true and lethal beatdown that's occurring right now. Honestly, hemp is just so much better than cotton. It's almost embarrassing to watch. But this is where we get into round five, processing. Hemp processing requires more energy, hence more CO2 emissions, especially to remove impurities before the fiber is spun into yarn. Hemp four, cotton one. And our final round six is money. Because cotton is such a long-standing industry in many parts of the world, the cost to produce it is very low. The technology to process it is well established, and the techniques to make it comfortable for the consumer have been around for literally centuries. But not forever. And Patagonia loves an underdog situation. They know how to change the rules of the game and pioneer something new, because that's exactly what they did with organic cotton. And we see them already today repeating the exact same steps. The first thing that they do is they get the farmers on board. Patagonia understands that they need to be able to guarantee a certain volume of sales to justify growing it, and they even co-sign loans with farmers to make it happen. Next, they need to reintroduce the processing technology. When they first got into organic cotton, no one wanted to spin it into yarn. Today, hemp processing is largely not available in North America, but they're betting that with their investment, they can bring it back to life. Next, they have to secure that supply chain. As we've seen over the last couple of years, where companies get their products and their materials is incredibly important. By building long-term relationships with their suppliers, Patagonia was able to get ahead of the competition in the organic cotton scene. Not only does this mean that they have an intimate relationship with where they're getting their stuff, but it makes them more resilient to the ups and downs of international markets. But don't think for a second that this is just a Patagonia charity gig. This is an investment in diversification. Don't get me wrong, it is a big bet to lead this change. It took more than two years for Patagonia to get back to normal after they switched to 100% organic cotton. But that investment paid off long term and they helped bring that material to the rest of the clothing industry. With hemp, the trajectory will be similar. Other textile players, the fashion industry will be able to jump in once they've paved the way. Once the technology and knowledge is there, it doesn't only benefit the company that originally invested in it, but the whole industry at large. Now, obviously at this point, we're fanboying, we're getting excited about this new thing, but we haven't really seen it in practice very much. How practical is this new material really going to be in the world today? Now, full transparency, we like Patagonia here at Future Proof. No shit. We've made videos about them in the past, and you should take our bias into consideration when you watch this video. And I know a lot of you are probably gonna go in those comments and say some nasty things about me being some little simp boy over Patagonia. You know what? Maybe a little bit, okay? So kill me, I like the brand, okay? They do a lot of cool things. Anyway, moving on. Patagonia recently launched its hemp collection and it is rarely 100% hemp, despite it being a breathable antibacterial and more durable abrasion resistant material. Because hemp is not as soft as cotton and it's difficult to produce and source and probably a whole bunch of other reasons that only Patagonia knows, the hemp collection items are almost always blended with other materials. For example, the workwear garments are made with a mix of 55% industrial hemp, 27% recycled polyester, and 18% organic cotton. These products are apparently 25% more abrasion resistant than conventional cotton. So it seems to be a great mix to make these pieces last even longer, which is super hopeful. I have personally owned a hemp blended pair of Patagonia shorts for about a year now, and honestly, they just kind of feel like shorts. Are they noticeably amazing in every way imaginable? No, but they don't feel that different, which is actually a pretty huge milestone. Introducing a new material into a market can be difficult because people don't want to try new things. But the fact that they are already creating products that blend in seamlessly with our current societal expectations 
means they're actually off to a pretty great start. You can probably expect more hemp lineups and more hemp blended products entering the market as things progress here over the next couple of years, but that doesn't mean you should necessarily rush out to go buy them. The clothing that you have in your drawer is the most sustainable clothing that you have, so make sure that you're using what you have as long as possible, and only when you need to replace things should you go out and buy something new and you should probably thrift it before even then. And we have a bunch of videos about thrifting too, so make sure that you watch those. Oh my God, so many things to think about. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you like it and maybe subscribe to the channel so that you get more awesome content like it from us. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.